This past January, students from Washita Baptist University were able to travel to the Sundance Film Festival in Park City, Utah. There, we saw some great movies, ate a lot of great food, and had a lot of fun. There was so much for us to do in the seven days we were there that would give us memories to last a lifetime. Here are our top six best experiences at Sundance 2017. Free stuff! Well, on Main Street in Park City, everyone needs to visit the Festival Co-op. Located on one of the town's store areas, the co-op offers an array of free things to festival credential holders. Upon entering the co-op, you are greeted by nice people with hot chocolate. Then you journey upstairs. You can obtain a free swell bottle, free socks, and free hats depending on the day. The Chase Sapphire Building offers free water bottles and samples of food found in restaurants on the Strip. Free swag can also be found in various venues at Sundance at various times, especially at movie premieres. Short films. Along with the full-length films we saw, we were also able to see many short films this year. Most of these films were around 5 to 10 minutes and were played one after the other. Many of these short films we never would have seen if we hadn't attended Sundance. It's almost a sense of pride knowing how much of a unique experience you got. Because of the shorter length, directors are able to be more experimental with their film. You can go from a high concept short about an infant living his entire life in a day, to an abstract piece about drowning, to a comedic adult animation about astronauts and melons, to a documentary about a guy who feeds hyenas. Every short is completely different than the one that comes before it. And that's the fun in watching them. Waitlisting. I'm not much for video games, but trying to get a good waitlist spot for a film felt like trying to beat King Boo with nothing but a scared Luigi and a Poltergeist 3000. That's really difficult, in case you didn't know. I'd stare intensely at my phone, praying it wouldn't die at the last second. And as soon as the waitlist opened up, I'd furiously jab my phone until my number popped up. If it was a single digit, I'd jump up and down, holding my phone as if it were the spoils from a hard-waged war. But more often, when my waitlist number was sky high, I'd hang my head in shame and try again next time. Either way, there was nothing quite like the rush of waiting for my number. World Premiere of Movies When going to Sundance, I expected to see many great movies, but I did not expect to be at the world premiere of quite a few of those movies. World premieres, I assumed, was for the elite actors and actresses to show off their movies to the other elite members of this art form. Never did I ever think that I would be able to attend one of these grand events, but I was not only able to attend one, but several world premieres of some really great movies. This was the first time that the movies were being screened for a live audience, and I was one of the people in attendance. Another wonderful thing about these premieres is that most all of the cast was there during the Q&A sessions. Throughout the rest of the shows, they may or may not have been there, so it was nice getting to be able to see them along with the movies. This great honor and privilege that Sundance brought me was one of the memories that I will cherish the most from this whole experience. Sundance can be a really great place to spot some celebrities. For most of the films at Sundance, the directors and cast members will show up to the premiere and have a Q&A right after the movie. Here I learned that your chances of having your question answered will increase if you wear a big dumb hat and wave your arms around. The Q&As are a great place to meet new filmmakers and actors, but it's also a great place to spot some really big Hollywood celebrities. Some of these included Keanu Reeves, Jack Black, Mae Jaleza, Rhett and Link, Kristen Stewart, Peter Dinklage, Sam Elliott, and even Quentin Tarantino was at Sundance this year. Seeing them on the big screen is one thing, but actually being in the same room as them is a really unique experience because you can see what they're actually like. Quentin Tarantino was surprisingly nice. Nobody even asked Keanu Reeves a question. Kristen Stewart is kind of crazy, and Peter Dinklage does not like dumb questions. Getting to know my fellow Sundance classmates. Thoughts such as, who's Jennifer Bray? Or, hey, my friend knows Will Blaze. I wonder what he's like. May have been commonplace before Sundance, but after a week in snowy Park City, Utah, we've all grown a bit closer to new friends. Aside from being some great movie watching buddies, the people I shared my Sundance experience with became frozen enjoying, overpriced food eating, weightless anxiety sharing compatriots. We may all come from different disciplines, 
but we all share a love for film and a desire for once-in-the-lifetime opportunities, and that proved enough to form wonderful new friendships. We may have never gotten around to watching Pulp Fiction together, but during our week at Sundance, we still had many great times together.